This is Fred Beck from Fred Dogs Fighting, proudly sponsored by Empire Fire Store. Today I'm very lucky to be joined by Daily Prallers in Rathbone Boxing Gym. Daily, let's start with a topic that everyone really wants to hear, that everyone's been dying to hear. How was your holiday in Venice? <laughs> yeah, it was good. Nice and relaxing. Was it nice to get away from it all just for a few days? You know, I'm a workaholic, but yes, for the first time I was like, get me out of the boxing gym, man. I don't want to even think about boxing. Obviously, I did when I was out there. A little bit because I think you were still watching it on your stories and stuff. Yeah, because it was it was just a weekend, you know, so a long weekend. There, so I still had to focus on um, the fights that are coming up. So couldn't switch off for too long. Yeah, for boxing, obviously in the media, stuff's always happening. I guess the coach, you're always on your phone, a promoter's DMing you. This fight's gonna make way. You got this possible fight day. So it's always busy, busy, busy. You never really truly go away, get away from it. But what's your life like outside of boxing? Would you say, or have you not got a life outside of boxing? No, no life. <laughs> no, I've got a life. Um, I see, I've yeah, I've got my wife, my kids. So my time is just dedicated to them, and this is why I do it. You know, obviously, I live and breathe this sport, boxing. But I obviously want to. I don't want to be second best at anything, because if you're second best, then you you don't get anything out of it. So um, to be financially secure. You have to put in the work, and I, and I do it. Obviously, I want to be the best coach I can be. I want my fighters to be world champions. And then I want my family to be uh, secure from that. Certainly. But obviously, you got a son, I believe. Would you want your son to box? Yeah, sons. Um, um, it's, difficult. it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because you don't want to get hurt, but you don't want them to enjoy themselves and like accomplish something, you know? I know what it's all about, so... You know the dark side of boxing, that's what it is. It has to be something from within that they want to do. Not something that I push them into. Something where... Because obviously, in this sport, you have to show a lot of dedication. And actually, I don't care what sport it is. Like, with my son at home, I'm like... I don't care what sport it is. If you, even if you're doing football, show me the dedication that you want to do football, so you got to have a dedication. I guess you want to achieve anything in life. You've got to have a dedication. You've got to go every single day and be working towards that goal. But would you say, oh, now you've started training your brother, Kenny, you've been training for a while now. Would you say you've grown a lot closer to him, brother-wise? Yeah, of course, because I'm with him every single day. So and then after training, we always go go out to eat and stuff. And When you say go out, not to the club, to go, go to eat. Exactly, just go over to go and refuel and uh, go over what we just done or you know, talk about life, or whatever it may be. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's good. It's good. Obviously, in the gym, it's all about work, work, work. But at the same time, it's good having him around, yeah. And then, obviously, we got Kenny, and we also got Deji. I know you got a plethora of other fighters you train. We'll talk about Deji. We'll start off his mindset. I think that's what everyone's been talking about. I think KSI's mentioned it a few times, how they need to improve his mindset. How has he mentally been in this camp so far? Yeah, just in, you know started off like this and he's gone like that and that's what you want to see when you're preparing for a fight you don't want to peak physically or mentally you know too quickly so he's in a good place um he's turned the corner he's been sparring some great people um some champions and holding his own with them going toe to toe with them so it's, uh, it's, he's in a very good place and actually today i was just having a little move around just a little fun with him i wasn't going to mention it but if you want to mention it we'll talk about it no he's uh obviously he had the 10 ounce gloves on so he cracked me around my jaw and i wasn't prepared for it i was just trying to replicate Fuzzy really if i was rep if i was being me he wouldn't have caught me with that but because i was replicating Fuzzy, i was like there you go that's how easy it is to catch Fuzzy. You know what I mean? And and he rattled my brain. So, 10 ounce gloves, anything could happen. It's a shame the cameras weren't turned on because something like a clip like that, obviously you wouldn't want to release it yet, but after the fight, you release a clip like that, then that can go viral. So, it's a shame that your cameraman, so I don't believe you had a cameraman there with you today. If he was recording, then that would definitely gone in, a, gone in the documentary. But now, we, obviously, his mindset's changed. But one thing about Deji, I think a lot of people talk about is his discipline. How's he been disciplined in this camp so far? Well, with me, you ain't going to get away with. I can tell by talking to you, you ain't going to go with anything. You, you ain't going to get away with anything. I don't waste my time. If you, if, you, if you haven't got my ambition and my dedication, then I can't train you. So 
That's the way it is with me. Deji's been sparring quite a few fighters. And Kenny's also been out there in the wildcard gym in LA, training with Freddie Roach. And what does he gain from training with Freddie Roach? Because I was talking to him just then, and he sounded like he'd learned quite a lot. In a bit, Steve. Steve. In a bit. Yes, yes, Steve. Um, yeah, the wildcard gym with Freddie Roach. Freddie Roach were... Were you kind of jealous you weren't there, but you had to go out with him? Yeah, because I, obviously I was, I was meant to be there. Oh, really? I was meant to be there, so was, I had to have, um, you know put a coach that's been helping me out to go there um but i was meant to be there but i'm i'll be i'll be going back so i'm not worried but obviously when your brother's training for a fight you want you want to be there but i have my pro fighter you know training for a fight so i couldn't go but i got all the feedback that i needed freddie roach who's one of the world's best coaches trained manny pacquiao he, he couldn't believe that he had only been boxing for a little bit over a year. Um, someone, went to, uh, well, someone went to ask Kenny, because Kenny was telling me earlier, someone went and asked him, are you turning pro? And so that's a, that, obviously that will boost you a little bit. If someone asks you, you turn me professional, and Kenny's only been training for a year and a half? Exactly, but what I like about Kenny's mindset, he ain't a fool to think that he can get in there and compete at pro level. So even though he got asked that question, he was um, he, he had the men... The, the men the, the mentality to turn around and give the right answer, uh, which is, I'm not going to kid myself and think I'm ready to take on pros. I've got a long way to go, and and that's good. Certainly, and so obviously today it's a Monday. This time next Monday there won't be anything happening, but you got then you got the event on Tuesday, the uh, public workout on the Wednesday, press conference Thursday, Wednesday Friday. How are you? How are you personally? Because you just got into the social media game. You get all the messages from the 10 year olds saying, Oh, are you fighting? Or is Deji going to beat Floyd Mayweather? They, they say all crazy things like that. One crazy thing I think you put in your story, which I actually did, <laughs> I actually did fall for, was saying that you're going to fight on the card. How many messages did you get on Instagram from that message? Uh, I won't count it, and it was just going crazy. But I just wanted to prove a point that the world, YouTube world, some of the fan base in the YouTube world, they're easily fooled. Um, and I was just making a point about the Jake Paul thing, you know what I mean? Don't believe everything he says, you know what I mean? Because in, in pro boxing, right, I always take it as this, right? I If I don't see a contract or if I don't hear a phone call or I don't see an email, and then I'm open to what he's saying and what he's saying, you know what I mean? Whereas in the YouTube world, if Jake Paul says one thing, one it must be true, you know what I mean? But it's not like that. You know what I mean? He's very good at manipulation. He's very good at marketing. He's done very well for himself as a businessman. You know what I mean? So good on him. But I was just proving a point. You say one thing in this YouTube world, then everyone goes crazy. One thing is taken completely out of context. Is fair, I did, <laughs> I did fall for it myself. I put a tweet out saying, I thought it was really cool. I was like, oh yeah, Denny Fries is fighting. And then someone's saying, mate, it's a joke. And I was like, oh gosh. Don't give me <laughs> Don't get me wrong, if someone chucks 100,000 at me and says, make a comeback, best believe I'll get in there and knock someone out. It'd be fun. You actually fought, I, I looked at your box right, you actually fought Hobie Price in the amateurs, didn't you? I can't remember who I fought in the amateurs. Oh. Long time. Hobie, Hobie Price is one of the top prospects in matching boxing now. He's trained by Dave Caldwell, he's definitely definitely up there. But I want to ask you a few more predictions. We'll start with KSI. KSI versus Swarms now. How do you see that fight going? Well, it has to be KSI, otherwise he might as well just stop boxing. So, Swarms, I think I saw a promo he put out, and I was like, oh, this is a disaster. But good on him, though. For save the card, short notice, hasn't really boxed before. So good on him, got balls, man. Anyone, anyone, I don't care who you are, if you're a top level or if you're just a novice, to get in the ring, it takes a lot of guts, so good on him. But KSI you should destroy him within one round. If he's lucky to survive one round and then two rounds max. That's your prediction right there. But obviously, a YouTube fight week is quite different to a normal boxing fight week. Are you looking forward to it next week? <laughs> it's crazy. It's a different world, let me tell you. The fans are nuts. So... Um, but I've experienced it before, so I'm used to it now. So but this is a whole this is a zone. It's yeah, a whole this different it, ball game. This, this would be a whole different ball game. I remember last time it was Wembley Arena, and you had people trying to smash into the Hilton Hotel to get to Deji. So uh, God knows what's going to happen this time. 
Have you got a security plan or anything like that? The better have security. Last time we couldn't even walk to the shop. We had to have the bodyguards walk us around because, yeah, the fans were just going nuts. So it should be fun. Yeah, it should be fun. It's only entertaining, I think, is quite, quite a good way to put it. But I'm going to come down and see you Friday again for one more interview with Daily. It's always been a pleasure. Thank you, mate. Thanks a lot.